before I took over as Dean R and D, I was also the in charge of our business incubator called Sign for almost six and a half years. During which time we had a lot of startups. Which before that we had only thirty startups, but then it went up to almost. To, today we have got two hundred plus startups. So all these startups require to protect their IP, to raise funds, all right, investments, etc., etc. So this is a very important aspect of IIT Bombay, and we would like all of you who have actually taken this course. And this course is not fun. This is of course fun, but this is for all serious entrepreneurs, would-be entrepreneurs, future future entrepreneurs, or those who would like to think about entrepreneurial activity. May not be immediately, but with time. Wherever you get placed, even the companies want you to be thinking in an entrepreneurial manner, and for which knowledge of intellectual property is a must. So again, uh, I would like to take a cross section. Of how many of you here are undergraduate students? All right. How many of you are M Tech student, oblique MSc student? Quite a few. And how many of you are PhD students here? Nobody PhD. Anybody postdoc? All right. So, so we we expect normally the B Tech students would create may not immediate startup, but yes, they would be definitely be worrying about the intellectual property of an idea they're possibly working on. Master students should be very very serious about an uh, technology based entrepreneurial activity. And what we at IIT Bombay encourage is tech-based entrepreneurial activity, and not a you know just a platform or something like what I call as idli.com kind of a stuff. With the knowledge that you gain at IIT Bombay, we would like you to use your knowledge to generate a very high-tech startup for which you own your intellectual property. All right. So based on the training that you have, based on your M-Tech project, B-Tech project, MSc project, or PhD. With your professor or colleagues, some colleagues coming together, complementary skills, we would like you to come up with a, a plan or activity. And this BS school actually would encourage you to come up with such an activity, which will be nourished. We will give some funds, but possibly develop a plan, and not only plan but realize the plan. All right, show us a proof of concept, etc., etc. So that after passing out from this place, you actually would like to have an entrepreneurial venture, maybe sometime immediately or later on. So that is all. So this course will talk about the basics of intellectual property. I'll take first two lectures today and uh, on Thursday evening, and then uh, Professor Hidwani will take over here to go in the details related to arbitration, litigation, and all those things related to IP rights. Any questions, anybody? You can stop me anytime. This course, I would like to have more and more interactive, so that you can raise the question. Do you know how many patents? Do you know how many intellectual property IIT Bombay files every year? Approximately, some number. Two fifty. Two hundred. Anybody? It's not as simple as that. All right. In a private company, so the first two numbers were approximately correct, 200 and 50. From that, sometimes we have gone to 250 plus. Also, every year, you know, this curve is like uh, uh, oscillating. It goes up. It went up during COVID time because a lot of IP, IP got filed in those days. But then everybody is working here, right? So writing a patent is not so simple. It takes time. It takes money also, and everybody is busy in their activities. Yes, so we do file, and we get award for almost all the years for the best innovation institutes, innovative institutes from various funding agency or IP rights or those who handle innovation, etc. So without this, I'll any question anybody has, you can stop me anytime, and we can discuss. Now the important question is what is intellectual property and if I don't want to go in the details of intellectual property, my first question is what is property. 
and I would like your opinion on that thing. So, once when I say I got a property here in Mumbai, what do you mean by that? Or any place that you come from, if I say somebody says I got a property, what is the normal meaning of that thing? Something that belongs to us, of course, to my property should belong to me, of course. What else? What is that thing comes to your mind immediately? But what could be those things? What is that property would be like? Like land, flat, housing, etc. etc. Anything else? Is it only non movable assets you are talking about or movable assets also? Vehicles, really. If my car is my own asset, I have paid money for that thing, right? So, the moment I say something is my property, I get some rights immediately. What are those rights that I get? For example, if I got a house, I got a flat. Obviously, as soon as I I own something, I got some rights. Any limitation that I have, what could be those rights? Either I stay in my flat, is that correct? Or I may give it to somebody else and I will take money for that thing. What do you call as a rent? Right? Anybody living in a rental accommodation here? Of course, those who stay outside the campus would understand the rent business. But I am sure you all know that you can rent your house or a flat to somebody and against which you can make money. What else can you do with those properties other than renting? Sorry? I can sell whenever I want to, isn't it? If I need money, I can of course sell it. Anything else? I can give only which is like a renting. I am making money out of it, right? Anything? I can decide to do nothing. I will not rent it, I will not lease it, I will not sell it. I can decide of my own because it is my property, isn't it? I will keep my flat vacant for whatever period of time I want and I it is completely my decision. So, it is my decision which will govern what should I do with my property. So, the base, the most important aspect about having my property is I am the decision maker, of course, but I have to take care of its taxes and all those things, right. If I, my flat is in some some cooperative society, I have got to pay for the maintenance of those things and all those things, right. You understand everybody, right, but it is my property. This property when I mean to say I get ownership, free to use it as I wish to use and I will say that. I will not allow A, B and C people to take my property. For example, I got a laptop, I can decide to give it to somebody and I can decide not to give it to somebody, it is my property. So, as soon as I own a property, certain things I get by default of owning a property, it is all all these characteristics that it comes up with. So, what is intellectual property? A general property and intellectual property, is there any difference between the two? I do not want bookish knowledge, but with full understanding if you can explain to me what is the difference between a normal property and what is the difference, what is how it is different from or how intellectual property is different than a normal property. So, we discuss normal property. So, can you comment on this? Yeah, it is a bookish knowledge. Read some book, tangible and intangible. Anybody else? You can inherit. If it is on my name, next generation can inherit the benefits of that, like any other property. But that is too far right now. What is intellectual property? Tell me about that. How it is different than a flat or a car or a laptop? Yes, please comment. Sorry? Yes, anything else? How is connected intellectually? I want that word to be focused now because the property is property. How is that property different from intellectual property? What is intellectual property? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Anybody else? This is 50.
can you add something can anybody add to that any idea he said something has come into existence you said idea these are two different things something else solution to a problem is mathematics also i can solve a problem that can be patented that can be my intellectual property can i get money out of that so all the properties that we talked about earlier like a house should be applicable for my intellectual property also so it's my property something which has come because of my brain power right something which has come because of my intellectual ability sitting between the two years which nobody else could think about so naturally it means that i have gone through some kind of a training a different training i have got a lot of experience about some i worked for 10 years on some artificial intelligence stuff i got some 10 years of working on a some new device completely new new motor for example i have come up with some new technology i come up with some new way of cooling things but that is because i have got expertise over and i worked on this system for last 10 years and i spent a lot of money and time and everything on that thing so it's because of my expertise my intellectual ability and the money i have spent on that because of which this thing i could come up with naturally because i have spent so much of time and money and my ability i should get some money out of it all right so this is what we call as intellectual property which is it which has come because of my training my ability to think which others couldn't do and my exposure also of course all right so intellectual property is the type of property that results from creation of human mind that is the intellect flat is not come out of your the property the you know the house has not come up because of your intellectual ability possibly the architect may have used of course his intellectual property in that case all right you can you can see this has come because of my training because of my training in uh, some kind of metallurgical material science i could think about a new material which can you know, today we are talking about hydrogen we are talking about hydrogen as a fuel right and this hydrogen will be stored in your car or bus or truck or whatever as gas can you imagine how much one cylinder of gas lasts it will possibly stand only 10 km but you would like it to be used one cylinder of hydrogen to be used for 200 km or 1000 km so this hydrogen is going to be stored for very high pressure do you know at high what pressure this is should be stored right now anybody has any idea because these are the these are the places where lot of patents are being filed right now this is the era of hydrogen fuel cell green energy new oil and gas new sources of energy all right photovoltaics and all those things anybody understand if i am i don't have a petrol and diesel tank to my car now at all but i am carrying hydrogen cylinder so how much gas can i carry so that the combustion happens i have to store this hydrogen for 1000 bar pressure so can you imagine 1000 bar of hydrogen sitting in your car and traveling with it and we hear of explosions happening every alternate day which material will stand 1000 bar these are the things that which on which lot of research is happening these days So we want to stay, we want to actually come out with a new material. Stainless steel cannot stand thousand bar. So which is that? Which is that material that will stand at high pressures? So a lot of material science scientists are working on that to come up with some something has to be not heavy also, isn't it? Otherwise the vehicle has to carry the huge weight of that particular material also. So we are all working on those things, and all those things, all those materials possibly would eventually lead to some kind of patents. for which the company would have actually you know worked out for 10 years something that if i want to store something at 750 bar that material should be actually be able to stand 2.5 times that pressure that means kitna hoga 2000 bar i have to take a test of that material that it will stand 2000 bar then only it will be allowed like a space qualification program if i want to take certain material in space and if i want to use it for 5 years there it should survive on ground for 10 years minimum two times similarly if i want to use hydrogen in my car it should stand for 200 bar then only i will be allowing it to be stationed in my car for 750 bar 
is a very high end research is happening on this what kind of composite material can it have what kind of combination what kind of fibers because you want it to have a lot of other characteristics also less weight lot of gas very high gas density lot of pressure but you know hydrogen is also very unsafe gas so smallest leak from here you can have explosion so we have to deal with all this compromising characteristics properties of such a gas which is a fuel so such things are happening and this will not come like that it can't i can't dream of such things unless i do experiments unless an entire industry work towards it to generate a new material new manufacturing ability testing ability testing facilities because not even one such cylinder should uh, if i do sampling of 100 cylinder not even one should break then only i will allow it to be club in a car with human beings otherwise this company can go bankrupt Do you understand this? These are very important things. So all these things are very important in order to do research. A lot of money is going to be, and it comes only out of intellectual ability of a person and the training that it goes up with. So all of you will be working on such things today. Battery becomes very important. What kind of battery and uh, and uh, laptop? You see, laptop right now is it gets hot within no time. So we're working on new kind of uh, heat release mechanism and how it should be cooled. Right, so the limiting parameter for any laptop today is thermal management. All these things come only when you do a lot of experiments. So the company is spending billions of dollars on this. They should be able to retrieve all those things by selling it at a higher prices, and that is only happening because of their intellectual ability or intellectual property. Okay. So this property of mine or anybody's. Is intellectual property can be owned, can be sold, can be leased, or can be licensed. The way I will do with my flat, I can sell my flat, I can own it. I don't want to give it to anybody. That's fine. I can lease it or rent it, or I can license it. All right. So IIT Bombay does all these things with the R&D office. Every weekly, we are licensing some IP to a company, to an industry. Against which we will like to take more money and give it to the investors. An inventor will be like anybody like you. One has to understand the ability, and the very important thing that you understand any work that you do with an industry. The first thing that you would like to understand who will own the IP. The moment some industry comes to you, and this is what we tell to all our professors and students, that the moment the the industry comes with some project, consultancy project, for example. or some research topic research work that they want it to be handling those things the first question we ask who will own the it we can share the it or it will be completely owned by us or it will be completely owned by a company three possibilities isn't it so all these things have to be worked out through negotiations and we can tell that look we have worked for 10 years we know all the everything about it everything is published so we have got all the knowledge right now why 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 should we share with you All these negotiations have to be done for our students and our faculty members, who will get ultimately the benefit will come to those PhD students, MTech students, or BTech students, whoever has contributed towards it. Now, in order to see that this is honored everywhere, not only India, but this is to be honored centrally, this to be honored internationally. If Apple has come with some invention, if Samsung has come with invention, it should be honored in India also. India said we are not signing that thing otherwise, right? So WIPO, which is called as World Intellectual Property Organization, the lot of signatories came together and they decided that we should honor this. If you hold an IP, uh, all right, so I will have to take give money to you, and then only I'll be able to sell that in my name. Otherwise, we will not honor each other IP. Then you know all this piracy and copyright and everything will go for. Go away. I will do reverse engineering and get money. So somebody is working for ten years, and somebody is just reverse engineering just stuff and getting money against that because now I I can sell it very cheap. I didn't have to spend any money to do research on that. Somebody else has done already. If we are a signatory to that thing, we should honor. Then only this company will sell it to us. Otherwise, they will not do business with our company. So from government of India side, we like to sign and honor. Very important thing. 
So in 1970, the the convention was signed in Stockholm, Sweden, in 1967, and entered into force in 1970. And it says not only technical things, all right, there are a lot of other things that come into it. Arts, a very important thing. Sports, broadcasting rights, advertisement, all those things have got intellectual aspect associated with those things. Okay. For example, how to advertise also is an art, isn't it? And I would like because I have spent a lot of money on advertising certain stuff. I would not like to be copy pasted by somebody else because it was my original idea. So, for example, I have, I have made a fantastic drawing, very beautiful drawing I have created. You know, somebody else just copies it. I would not like this to be done. So, all these things are taken care of. So, you can see literary, artistic, and scientific works. Performers or performing artists. For example, somebody's song, a fantastic song sung by some artist. And I say, I call you here and I got a fantastic program and I will start charging 10 rupee per person. Come in this hall, I will play this music. So, I am actually commercializing that. I am making money out of somebody's personal which is not allowed. I can see in my house or if I want to show, I would actually have to go to the person and take permission from there. But the moment I start having a commercialization activity done using somebody else's property, I can be sued, I can be taken to a court. Alright, so such a small gathering will not be called a commercial program, it still can be called a private program in IIT Bombay. So, you understand the gravity of the same program if I do in some big hall and start charging or maybe 1983 World Cup, I got a live program, I got a live recording and start showing that thing for the World Cup final. The broadcasting right has gone to somebody, some Sony channel or whatever channel. But if I start showing that thing and start making money, all right, 100 rupees per person, they can sue, but the rights belong to them, all right. So, literary, artistic, scientific work, performances, performing artists, phonogram, broadcasts, invention in all fields of human endeavor, scientific discoveries, industrial designs, design also. The artistic look of a let us say a wine bottle is also going to be somebody's uh, intellectual property. All these are covered. Trademarks, the way McDonald's is written, nobody can copy that. Nearest to that also nobody can go to that. In the moment McDonald's complain that look, the way I wrote M, somebody writes N in that way also can be sued. So, it should not even go to nearest to that. Because you are creating a, you know, some kind of a different connotation from that. You are actually copying somebody, but doing something different also. So they can sue. So you got a Eureka right here. You got a Eureka competition happening in IIT Bombay. There is something called Eureka by other institutions. You should be worry about that thing, for example, because they can write in a similar way. And actually, we are worrying should we sue them now. So, all those things are very important because trademarks, you know, you form association with particular thing. The moment I know that, you know, you have got a, what should I, what example, let us say Pizza Hut. I can write something instead of Pizza Hut, I can write something different but in a similar way. So, even the color that you use can actually be questioned by somebody else. And that will happen only when they are making a lot of money, otherwise nobody is bothered. The fact, the fact that Pizza Hut will notice that somebody is writing hut like them is, is making more money, they can sue them and they can actually find out that is wrong. So, one can get actually protection against all these things, all other rights resulting from intellectual activity or the industrial, scientific, literary or artistic. These are all actually reproduced here. This is what is written in WIPO. So, you would like to protect those people who have spent a lot of money to do invention. They have innovation, they have done innovation, they have come with new things, new technology, new process, new product, new arts, new performance. They should be given protection because it's originally their creation. And you would like to ensure that these people get benefit, both monetary benefit and of course the you know they are actually appreciated by people, appreciated by people, right? So there are several things today who actually where you see this copy happens and you can actually sue them. Provided you have to go to the court and again spend a lot of money. So, a lot of small people will not come into the market. The startups cannot do that, right? 
So therefore, startup should be very, very sure that what they are doing, it is not infringing on anybody's IP. You understand that? If you have come up with some new plan, you might feel that look, I have, this is my original thought because you are really gone by the you know very fundamental level. But the fact that you should always always check that whatever innovative innovation that you have thought about is not infringing on somebody, somebody may have already thought about it and somebody may have already done things about it. So, you have to actually see that you are not infringing on somebody's intellectual property and this is where you have to actually for a technical matter you have to actually go to a prior art search to see that the way you have designed something new, some new cylinder, some new storage method of hydrogen gas has not been invented by or has not been you know protected by somebody else's IP. You are not infringing on his or her IP in that case, very important. So, I am assuming that all of you would be interested at some point in time in your life to have a startup activity or an joining an industry and possibly do innovation play also. So, you also you should always check that whatever thought has occurred to you, the 90 percent possibility is somebody else has already thought about it. One should always before you invest in that thing, please get clear. Nobody will invest in you, nobody will fund your venture unless you prove to them that you are not infringing on somebody else's IP. And the moment you show to them that look, I got 10 IP on this product, yeah, the investment will they will start looking at you in a very positive way. Not that they will invest, but they will at least you know the first level of whatever resistance will be actually shown that you have really done something great and that is why I got 10 IP. So, what are different categories? In what way you can actually protect your intellectual property? Copyright. So, every literature, the kind of novel that you have written, the, the Hindi Bollywood story that somebody has written, the book that you have, the poetry that you have done, which is your copyright. Okay. So, literary, artistic, scientific work, for example, books. The moment I publish a paper, I give my copyright to a journal, I sign on that form that my copyright has been given to you. If I do not do that thing, it belongs still to me. Every journal will be doing that thing, right. Of this property is governed by the laws of concerning copyright. So, the moment I write a book, it is my copyright. The moment I write a poem, write a you know a software program, algorithm, it is my copyright. It has come up. I, I do a good sketching. Beautiful painting, it is my copyright. No one else can do business about it. It comes into existence as soon as I start drawing it, provided I register it also. I have to register it also. Second is performance, broadcast, and concerts. Protection of this property is governed by laws concerning copyright related rights. That means somebody has given a performance, he or she holds a copyright. But that performance broadcasting right I have taken. Is called related rights. As I say, Sony TV or some TV has taken all the cricket matches or football matches that happen, they have taken the rights. No other channel can do that unless they take permission from you. So, all the related rights. So, I can't I can't show somebody's performance immediately to take permission from them or have to pay them now. So, these TV channels now there is a big war going about the copyrights. I cannot I cannot even play somebody's old phone. Unless I take performance, unless I take a right from them by paying some lump sum money, then only I can play that song in somebody's other channel or you know advertising whatever. Cricket broadcast, they show on every TV every time. Unless they own the rights, they will not be able to do that. Then the patents you know. So copyrights are different, related rights, patents is a way that you are protecting your industrial designs. Anybody from IDC here? Yeah, so, IDC people are the one who will actually, you know, we do a lot of industrial design registrations for them, design registrations. The shape of a soft drink bottle, for example, the, the car looks, you know, you can see that something, something which is related to your aesthetics and not, and not technology. Technology will come possibly in patent. For example, aerodynamics of aeroplane or a car which possibly will be covered under patent. But something that looks jewelry, for example, ornaments, you know, shape of a bottle, etc., that comes in design aspect. 
a lot of people do it a design of a you know uh, chair ergonomic design of a chair possibly can be covered under industrial design trademark everybody knows about trademark right i can know the mercedes immediately i can know maruti i can understand maruti and all those brands immediately the moment i see the trademark for those things geographical indicators so you know name of a product with unique geographical origin such as champagne where does champagne come from And any any other geographical invention? Can you can you tell me who are the indicators that come and belong to certain geography? Let's say in India today. So sugar lies all over India. Come on. Has it been granted? Oh, now panna clear, yeah, pura. Odi. Anybody else? That's one such case. Matkana marble come from Grana. This is in Rajasthan. Very good. Yeah, correct. Marbles are very famous from that area. Even the even the stone that comes from Rajasthan is very famous from this area. Anybody else? Yeah. This is a problem. I am not sure they registered, but yes, you can say that. So one has to actually register. For example. The Banarasi sarees that come from Banaras, they have registered. You can't produce Banarasi saree in Chennai. The Banaras people actually will can sue those people there because that particular skill belongs to that thing, and that's why it sells, right? I can I can't show the because it's all come with the particular characteristic of Banarasi saree. Therefore, it belongs to. And then, for example, what comes from Lucknow? Anybody from Lucknow here? Yes. So all these things very famous. Anything else other than Chicken. Lucknow is famous for a lot of things. Anyway, I'm sure everybody of you come from different places. Huh? Red chili. <laughs> what is famous from Mumbai? Vada Pav. Everybody knows that thing. So I'm sure you can find a place. Like you can find from wherever, whichever place you come from. There must be very significant things from that place. Which may be registered, which may not be. You have to actually register. So, geography, for example, the Alphonso Magno, you know, they come from Ratnagiri, Konkan area, Maharashtra. So, they are actually you can't have that thing from any other place. Any other place. And in Alphonso also got a different type now. So, all those people who actually, because of their geographical location, because of the climate they have, you know, over a period of time of 50, 100 years. They come together, and you know all the weaver community and all that thing very active. They understand all those things. Basmati rice, for example, and all those things. They have they, they understand that it sells because of the geographical location that the producers have, and that's why it sells. All right. I don't want to have a champagne coming from uh, you know somewhere down south. It has to come from France only, isn't it? That kind of a thing. So you know every everything has got therefore. Connections to a geographical location. So please understand that. If I go ahead, integrated circuits also can actually be. Yeah, you want to say something? So integrated circuits also can actually be protected. And to, today, it had gone out of sequence because every three years, every two years, circuits change. Your mobile phone, you show, you you dump it every three years, every two years. But because of semiconductor thing, again these things are coming back. So in between, almost for 20, 25 years, nobody has to really look at integrated circuits. But now it may come again because of all the chips and all the shortages that have failed. A lot of people can come with new opportunities now in this space. Plant variety protection for uh, agriculture people. You can come with new cotton, you know, GM cotton and hybrid and all those possibilities are there, where you want certain properties and you know. Hybrid properties, essentially, one can protect plant variety. So a lot of disputes happen. You know, you know about disputes of all these things against different hybrids and all those things. But yes, they are being used. And trade secrets. I think this is a very loosely used term that I would not tell you this thing because it's my trade secret. Right? Somebody's uh, cooking, somebody's mother's cooking can be trade secret for them. Because that taste you will not get anywhere. 
it is come because of the trade that they have followed over the years. Right? You can always say that this is my trade secret, I will not reveal it to you. So, these are all intellectual property rights. Can you summarize this? How many, how many ways of protecting I just told about your intellectual property rights? What was the first one I told? Copyright. Second one. Third. Loudly. Patent. Okay, we are going in sequence. Fourth one. Industry design life. Fifth. Trademarks of you are. <laughs> okay. What all do you remember then? Plant varieties, land, geographical, integrated circuits, industrial designs. All right. So again, I would like to replace those because very important that you should remember these things. Okay. Copyright, related rights, patents, industrial designs, trademarks, geographical indicators, integrated circuits, plant varieties protection act. Trade secret and all these things. Now, a startup, if I talk about students of IIT, now you would not be worried about plant varieties, integrated circuits so much right now, right? Trade secret also is not valid in India. We do not do trade secret in India, right? It all happens in US. But what is most important, but trade secret again, if your product is going to be sold in US, for example, if you are making a specific product, you have to worry about these things also. So, what I am worried about startup, because I am talking this course to all of you mostly from startup point of view. So, I would be worried about my startup because I am focusing more on tech based startups, alright. So, patents are the most that we file here, almost 80 percent of our intellectual property that we file is going to be in form of patents. Then trademarks and domain names for mostly for startups, copyrights, A lot of people from IDC, alright, so they have copy. My lecture material is my copyright. The way I present, it does not belong to IIT Bombay by the way. All the professors, the way they give lectures, the way they prepare their slides is going to my copyright. While all your patents and everything belong to IIT Bombay, I will come to that later on about IIT Bombay IP policy. But how the way I give my lectures, what kind of examples I give, you know, is all going to be my copyright. Similarly, whatever you write, you know, the, if you write a poetry tomorrow, to be your right. If you if you teach in a class, it is going to be your copyright. Right. Design rights, trade secrets. Normally, these are the three, four, five ways that normally we use at IIT or a startup can use this. Much dominant are going to be patent and copyright and design rights. These three things. Right. Any questions till now? Are you clear about in what way your intellectual properties, intellectual rights can be protected? That is A and what are that we are talking about and now I will go through each of those things in detail. What is patent and all those things. Any questions till now? You can stop me anytime and ask this question. Okay. With this now let us come to see what is a patent. Now can you tell me what is it? I think patent is a very loosely used term again. Anybody says I can you tell me as a technical person what is patent and why do you file a patent? Why should I worry about it? I have told you already indirectly, but let us now take it a little formally. What is a patent and why should you file it? Or why should you have it? I think is the first question why should you have it? Any comments? Anybody has a patent here? Granted or filed? You got a you got a grant now or you have filed a patent? You called to our office only, right? Good, very good. So anybody is filing, anybody is writing, anybody is having some thought on their mind that yes, I am going to write a patent. Be confident about it. Come on, I am not asking you what is going to patent. Alright, so yes, you should you should file a patent, which is very important. If you believe that this patent is going to be commercially, there is no point in just filing patent because you are paying a lot of money for it. Alright, but while you are filing a patent, you should have clear plans or understanding that this patent is going to be give me a lot of money. 
you are going to do a commercial activity about it around it. Otherwise, generally filing pattern has no meaning. I can have 10 and 50 and 100 patents, but I am spending my money. Every patent taking one lakh rupee from me. Why? Why should I do that thing unless it pays me back? Only one should be very careful about filing such patents. So, unless your advisor tells you, unless your M Tech, B Tech project, or some class project also can fetch you a completely new idea that you you might come up with, showcase working of that model and file a patent. So, what is a patent is a right granted to inventors to prevent unauthorized use of the invention within a particular territory for a limited time. What does it mean to prevent unauthorized use? This was because I have spent money, time and everything for it, right? Somebody has spent. See, normally all these things written for a commercial company. Education Institute is one part of it, but if you are working with a private company like R&T or Tata or you know big company like Amazon or Google or whatever, they have to take care of uh, all the intellectual property because there are so many competitors sitting around them. Unless you take care of such thing, you will never, somebody else will copy it for peanuts and you will not get anything, alright. So one has to see that I want to prevent unauthorized usage of my knowledge that I got in a particular territory. The moment you particular territory that means patents are limited to a territory okay and for limited time that means there is a, there is a finite time which is valid only for this much of time beyond which it will be open for everybody okay to so understand and we will talk about that little more it does not guarantee freedom to exploit the invention what does it mean there is something called as background patent and foreground patent the moment I do some incremental I can't use it unless I have got a background pattern with me also, alright. So, unless I for example, I have developed a new cooling mechanism for laptops which will become very hot, but there is already something there, there is a heat pipe sitting in the laptop, anybody from mechanical engineering here, you understand heat pipe, end of a heat exchanger, right. So, I have I have already designed a heat pipe for that thing, but I am now extending to make it more efficient. So, this is incremental thing, but not I am not inventing a new heat pipe. So, somebody has already done 80 percent work and I am adding to it. This is called incremental work. Unless you are technology disruptive, that means nobody has worked on this earlier and suddenly you have come up with it. Then, of course, it is a first patent of its kind, but most of the patents are incremental in nature. And therefore, they can't operate all by themselves unless you take the previous patent with you. So, the background pattern, unless the background pattern also belongs to you, you can't use your incremental pattern, the foreground pattern. So, whenever we do business with industries and whenever we license IIT Bombay's IP to an industry, we say before you came, we have all the background work. So, the professors have been working for 10 years. So, what we are giving you is the incremental part of it. And that incremental part cannot be used unless you take a background also. So, we try to sell earlier patents also and make money. You understand that? So, your idea, unless it is of a very disruptive nature, and most of the time it may not be, so that idea has no meaning or, or that idea cannot become operational unless you take the background patent also with you. So, that you got a full end to end access to it. Otherwise, you are going to be infringing on because other person will sue you that look we have already got a patent for the previous IP which you are using by default. So, does not guarantee freedom to exploit the invention immediately. You have to see that you are not infringing or you are not using somebody else's patent to use. All right. A typical patent would look like this the first page of this. Has anybody seen patent? I am sure those who are filing must have seen, but otherwise you are not. So, I am just showing one United States patent. So, you can see a, I am not sure that this can be shown here. So, you can see here somebody's name is coming. You can see the year, it has got a number here and when it is granted. You can see the cryostat assembly as a title of the patent, then inventors and assignee, they are very two important words. 
I am the inventor, but my patent is assigned to IIT Bombay. All right, so it is the IIT Bombay will. You are the inventor. Your right cannot be taken by anybody. You are the inventor, but all my innovative activity you are assigned to IIT Bombay. That is because of my appointment here at IIT Bombay, and that is because of your students of IIT Bombay. Automatically, your innovation is assigned to IIT Bombay. A lot of things when I when I had filed for application, I was asking. What are the prior publication data that I have used? All right, so all the details are given here. The references that I have used, and a small aspect of my work is given, and a major figure has been shown here. All right, so this is a small patent about that. One more U.S. patent. So you can see the magnetic field generating assembly. That kind of patent. Again, you can see patent number, date of the patent. Then you can inventors. Then you can see it is assigned. Then again, you will see a major feature in the small aspect and small kind of a references I had used while filing this patent. So the different types, and this is U.S. patent will have different pro forma. Some other country will have different pro forma, but no, but by and large, it will have the same information. All right. So this is a this is how even Indian patent would look. So what does do patent explanation? First of all, very negative point about patent is it prevent others. So the moment I file a patent, it means there are a lot of people who will not work on this area. Now. The moment I find a solution to a problem, it actually prevent others to work in that area because they'll find oh there is a solution already found, so I should have spent my money now, which is not a correct thing, right? Everybody should work together and find a better and better solution. But in this world of commercial successes, moment the bigger industry finds a solution to a problem, small industry will not waste their money because they know that the solution has already been found. All right. So the kind of a negative message about patent is, yeah, I better not work in this area or I should not get into this commercial activity anymore because this is a problem which is being sorted out. Now. Somebody else has already found a solution to this problem. So even though I have already spent a lot of money and time and expertise, I may be discouraged because I have spent enough money now. You understand? A lot of startups do work in a in an area which which is required in a society. But the moment you understand somebody else has found a solution already, which is a better solution, I may not work in that area now anymore. But then my solution also could have been a you know better solution over a period of time. But you are preventing because I don't have. Resource. A small startup will not have a lot of resources as compared to the bigger industry because they can they can have ten people working on that team while you may have only one or two persons. So it actually kind of puts me off to work on this research area. So that will be a kind of a negative, right? Get benefit from you for your knowledge, which is built. So one of the good thing about patent is I have built so much of knowledge and expertise in this area that I should of course get money in return for that. Patents are territorial, so the moment I say I got an Indian patent, it's valid only in India. The moment I, unless I go to other countries and pay for it, so. for example, Indian patent has no force in other countries. Just as the foreign patent has no force in our country, somebody has an American patent, he can of course produce it in India. Also. We can also we can also produce the same thing in India because they have not filed a patent in India. Do you get it? Unless they have a patent in my country, I am free to. Even if I do reverse engineering of that thing, they can't stop me from that thing because they have not taken patent in my country. Limited time, 20 years, from date of publication. So validity from 20 years, but you have to register it or pay for the fees every seven years, or you know if you want to go ahead and spend money. But after 20 years, they say that you have you have made a lot of money now for your for your innovation. Now it is in public domain, so anybody can now you know read it and do business around it. So in 20 years time, is supposed to have made a lot of money, and then it is in public domain. So anybody can copy, anybody can reverse engineer. It's allowed. It's nothing illegal about it anymore. Positive right restricted by previous. This is what what I was talking about foreground and background right. It is still restricted by previous patent because I don't hold previous patents unless I 
get right. So I actually should get it licensed to me first if I want to do a good business. So if I have developed something, I should get all the previous patent licensed to my company. Then only I will be able to do a business around the entire product. All right. So any of you who is thinking about a startup and you feel that I have got a patent in a particular area, of course you can do a business only in that area, but that may not constitute the entire product. To do a proper business, you have to have earlier three patents possible. So it's a good thing that you should approach the earlier three patents company and get it get those license to you, against which you have to pay royalty to them. Understood that? If if I have developed a good cooling mechanism, of if or if I have developed the material which can stand very high pressure, right? The other company who want to do business in hydrogen car, they should come to me first, get this license of how to store hydrogen in this material and then only they will be able to sell. Although they have got a patents of everything, entire truck and bus or whatever, they have to take the material that I have created to be licensed to them against which I will take some royalty. That is my model of business, whatever. You can take one time money and give it for them for life, alright, or you can take every yearly royalty also. So all these are the different models of that is what we use. Freedom to operate market practice to be free from income. So very, very important. When I am giving my patent to be used by somebody else or if you start up and I am actually, you should ensure that my patent is not infringing on somebody else's right. It is a very important activity, very important. So there are specialists who seek like that. We do not take that much of pain in India, but a very important in a big industry because you know the company can actually go bankrupt, moment they sue somebody and they will lot of, spend a lot of money into that thing and moment they understand this is infringing on some very small silly aspect. There are people who are just sitting there to see you, that is their business. Okay, so they can actually find out that something, this part of yours is actually overlapping with our money and they will say okay license it but give us a lot of money. So all these things are actually a big game played by you know big companies also, including all Apple and Samsung and everybody. But yes, that is that is today's market, that is today's uh, dynamics. That happens. For example, electric bulb. We say Einstein invented Edison, invented Edison bulb, but no. To be honest, he had not. He developed that material, tungsten material. While the earlier material couldn't last long. A lot of people who had actually developed those materials, all right, and then he did that thing, and he had to take the entire license of the bulb from the other company. Then only he could do business. All right, so I will not go into detail for that. Very important this aspect. What should be patented? What is requirement of a patent? So can you say? Can you tell me? If I say I would like to patent something, what kind of things? are required that I can patent out of this other thing. Very important. A lot of people fail to get patent because they do not satisfy this requirement for patentability. So can you imagine what could those be? Prior knowledge, fine. And there are a lot of things but the prior knowledge about existing patent, let us say. Somebody had said idea. Who said somebody has an idea? I've got a fantastic idea. I can present to my friend. Okay, yeah. Next, very important things. What can be patented? Yeah, it should be new. First of all, it should it should be something novel. The novelty aspect is very important. And second, associated aspect with it is also. It should not be obvious. All right, so very important. These are two terms that it should be novel. That means nobody has done it earlier, and I am doing it. But it can't be extension of some earlier thing, which is very obvious. Yes, I should have a copper material because of high conductivity. I know that, right? But somebody has not used copper. 
but he just use copper and he want to patent that thing that cannot be patented because I know that high conductivity will be copper. So, very important are these requirements, it should not be an abstract idea, all right, very important. I would like to see showcase, show me the results. I can come to your life if I am a person who is who is going to be writing your patent, for example. I would like to see before the grant, show me the working model, for example, or some kind of thing that prove that yes, you understand this. I can ask this question. I just cannot say this sitting in my brain here. No, that is not enough. I would like to see working some algorithm which you want to patent or some working hardware. I can question this. If you can't, if you can't fulfill my questioning ability, if you want to write a patent, the patenting officer, the patenting person is going to ask you a lot of questions. They are all technically qualified people. And if there's a doubt, he said, "Let me come to your lab. I would like to see." Okay, so see, IIT institutions are very, very okay. But you see the commercial organization. Just because somebody has launched some product, other person can claim I have done something. So the person can actually question, show me that thing, alright, so very important from business point of view, business is at the core of everything, novelty, it has to be novel, it has to be something new, non-obviousness, as I said, somebody wants to have a cooling to be done faster, I always say thermal conductivity should be high, copper, very high thermal conductivity as compared to stainless steel, this is very obvious, you can't patent it, because generally people are not used. But then I know that copper is not, does not have that much of strength as stainless steel has, alright. So, I want to have good strength also, I want to have good conductivity also. So, I actually optimize it and that is why I have chosen material A. But you can say, you cannot say I will replace it material B and I file patent for this, no. What you are saying is very obvious. Utility, you can, it cannot random, you have to show for a particular purpose and what is that purpose? So, normally our patent has to be very, very broadly based. It should actually, today I am writing a such thing. If I am writing a patent about a cooling of a thing, I should actually conceive what all can be coming into that. What all get treated, wherever a motor is, in a fan to a computer to anything, whichever requires thermal cooling. I should be able to conceive. Tomorrow somebody can find that there is a fault, you have not mentioned this. He can file a patent in that area because unless it is very obvious, unless non-obviousness that should not come in that way, but something completely different that he thinks or she thinks about it, yes the patent can be granted. So, utility is also very, very important. The procedural requirement, the moment you write a patent, just cat it out of the bag, out of the bag, because you write everything about it. I can actually read your patent and do the thing written in such a way that somebody can now, everything is out of your intellect, somebody can copy it very, very easily now. If somebody is copying, you can't prevent him or her now because you have to actually enable because sometimes it is so that I have to write very small steps also, for example, a chemical process you have come up with, you have to write all the details at what temperature, how much time, which pressure and all those details you write in such a way that tomorrow somebody can actually you know duplicate that stuff, that way that means you are actually giving all your knowledge to somebody else, it is written in such details. So, one of the procedural requirement is to write in all those details, definitiveness, it will have claims. The moment I say somebody something this house is my property, I know it is 50 by 60 build up carpet area and everything, everything. so it is bound by some boundary conditions. So, your patent is bound, is also written in the form of claims. What is that I am claiming? I am claiming a device which does A, B, C, D, E, whatever. And if I do not write that, if I do not write F, that can be taken care by somebody else. So, again see the, imagine what all could be covered in my claims. Because somebody else find a way out, he can file a patent in that area very important that you imagine today in what way your device or your technology or your product or whatever can do a business in what area. 
if the small gap is there, somebody else can file about it in that area. See, if I am expert in that area, I can actually, you know, circumvent your patent. Do you understand that? If I write a procedure, I can say, no, I will not do this, I will do other way because of which I will be granted something. So, you should not actually leave a chance for anybody else to circumvent my patent. So, patent writing is an art and that is why person like you and me cannot write a patent. The IP firms that we indulge, we work with, they charge us heavily for writing a patent. It's like a the way you and me cannot go to the court, we have to take a lawyer. Similarly, we have to actually take services of somebody who will write this patent for us. Many times after your patent has been written, if you look at read, you will wonder if this was my patent or something completely different. That language, absolute legal language they have to write. So that is the way it is written. Because that is the way the businesses understand. All right. So very important that we spend lot of money, and these people can charge you heavily depending on. But tomorrow these are the people who suppose somebody takes you to court, somebody sues you, somebody somebody takes you for arbitration. These are the people who will defend us, and that's why you actually have patent firms. And lot of IIT Bombay student work in. In fact, my M Tech student, he take a dual degree student. Is working and he's paid heavily. In in India, he's paid a one crore plus. So can you imagine? The US best company and goes to all the patents. But then you understand the language, you understand the claims. You have to find a you know prior art that everybody has worked. All right. So all these things you have to search and then decide whether to take it ahead or or this something non-obvious and something non-utility. There is nothing known for novelty, they check everything. So, writing a patent is a, and that is why we at IIT Bombay has taken help of almost 10 or 12 firms who, who, who write a patent for us. So, we ask the professor to talk to the concerned person. The professor will tell the language he or she will understand, and then they write down all your claims. Very, very important. That claims and boundaries are therefore very important to be written in a and you have to write your best results. You should say, I will get 88 percent efficiency of an engine. I should give all the parameters associated with it. If you write for 85 percent, somebody else will come and say, no, my patent is better because I am getting very high efficiency with these parameters. He or she actually can supersede your patent then. So, you actually should give the best results and all the associated conditions for that to achieve the best results. Heat a particular temperature, then soak it for some time, then again raise the temperature, go to this pressure, and then come down. All this thing you have to write in order to cure a material for example. Last very important, right? Very important thing: the ideas and the concepts only cannot be patented. You have to show, showcase that you have worked towards it, and you got some prototype, you have got some algorithm, you got some basic understanding of those things. It's very important. A lot of people, you might think that I will do this A, B, C and all that thing, but unless, unless you work it out, you will not get anything out of it. So, a lot of pharma company these days are very, all these bias and people, you know, the pharma company, medical diagnostics, you know, one has to be very, very careful that you actually showcase some work towards it and of course, uh, medical things are cannot get certain things because you know you have to get so many so many approvals or so many certification these days that un unless you get FDA approvals and you know approval from many industries you will not get into this. Any questions till now? Any basic doubts do not worry about that. Yeah. Well, why I am supposed to write my patent to get the best results. Somebody has bettered my result by doing some changes in a process. Yeah, you have to see that it is not falling in non-obvious things. Obviously, he is not doing minor change. I have worked for 10 years. I will not do that error. Obviously, he has done some changes in the process or a technology somewhere. That is very important. So, it will be taken entire thing as a package. But a lot of people see that, look, I do not want to give all my knowledge. 
so i actually would like to you know do some changes in such a way that i give half the knowledge and get a pattern but the by getting giving the half knowledge you are actually leaving a passage for somebody else to get into that gap and file a the pattern so one should not do that it will be increment but it should not fall in any of this it should be novel it should be non obvious these two conditions see lot of patterns actually in india will go grand because more, many of the things are obvious in fact i will say 70% of the pattern don't get grand because they are obvious and let me tell you even if i get a pattern even if i get a pattern tomorrow company b want to can sue me saying that that pattern grant was wrong because i have already done work in this area okay so if the company can prove that look i am working from my childhood but i never applied for a patent but this knowledge is known to me and he can prove it in the court so just getting a grant is also not sure shot thing tomorrow somebody else who had not practiced but you can prove in a court that look baspati mo rice we have been using for hundreds of years right turmeric powder we have been using for medical purpose for so many years only thing we didn't know about patent for turmeric powder to be used for medicine by somebody else cannot be given a grant because in india we have been using for more than 100 years i can just have to just prove it it all depends on how you present it now right you understood that so even if i getting a grant doesn't ensure tomorrow somebody else can prove it that look i have been following this practice for so many years and I, yes i can prove it because i got devices and practices over the years that is why many many times we from ircc Uh, we have given some small books for especially master student to write the what they are doing their lab so you got those lab uh, manuals so those who are doing research how to write in the, the manuals date wise and it should be signed by your professor also frequently so suppose a similar work is being done in some other industry and they file a patent you can actually go and cross them that look this is my noting in my manual that i have worked in my lab on this thing on those days those are very important private companies every researcher every r&d person will be using this ip books literally every day to write down what they have done today and to be signed by some his boss or colleague which is valid in court of law in case somebody sues you that look i have been doing this i have not filed a patent but we have been following this for years Oh, it can. See, one has to really prove it. What was wrong in the earlier pattern? But somebody has proved something, right? Because the patent has been granted. See, patent grant is very important. The patent has been granted after taking care of all those things. So, patent has been granted to A because of whatever he has written in patent A. patent b has been granted to b because whatever he has written in patent b if they are contract it never itself okay go patent a can sue patent b and take it to the court that whatever he has done is foolish is not correct again the court comes into picture economic office wing eow comes into thing that i am suffering because of his patent i am economically suffering so you actually can take the offense thing it all will be taken in totality utility non obvious there novelty subject matter all of it so he can do for a whatever a has written for his utility he can do that thing. he can do for all other, all other things it has to have again novelty and non obvious Any, but only utility changes is not good enough. Utility is a must, but he has to prove that it is still novel. It is still non-obvious. As I said, seventy percent fail, patent fail because they are obvious. That non-obviousness phase is a very very important, very important. It sounds very crucial, very sound very simple here, but very crucial. i not say prototype exactly yeah then how can you get a patent for that they must
must have done some robotic arrangement or something like that. But it's something it's like not. A grant pattern should have to have all these things. It has to be novelty, non-invasive, utility also. I of course I don't know what you're talking about, but we can discuss that and show me the patent also. That's okay. As long as it has got some utility specially written in that patent uh, drafting that I am doing this for you know specific A, B and C things, alright. This utility has to be the master. Patent, I will come to that thing. But there are experts sitting down here, you know the moment I, I submit my paper for a journal. You know, there are three reviewers or four reviewers, they will go through all those things. They are experts working on this area for 25 years. They know all the small paper coming and that. They will accept or not accept. Similarly, there are experts who are sitting and judging all the patterns in their particular particular area. Electric battery, there are experts sitting down there. A lot of patterns do come to IIT Bombay for review by, to be reviewed by particular professors before they are applied sent for applications. Because they want to be sure, doubly sure that there is no pattern in this area. Various things. Just the amount given means. <laughs> that's a business. That's a business question. You know, it all depends on what you get out of that thing. What in return? It's a very, for example, COVID. You are ready to give anything because you wanted to have a vaccine. That was the crucial time. So today, a lot of people are working on electric battery, hydrogen storage, and all those things. This is the time when a lot of people are. So I want this to be done as early as possible. Let's say. So I possibly would like to give 10 lakh rupees to be filed by tomorrow. That is the cost if you are talking about patent filing cost or attorney cost or something like that. All right. So that is the cost I am talking. About. I didn't understand your question. If you're talking about patent filing money only or something else, I can employ 10, 100 people. There is a big problem sitting down here. I want to find a solution. I will employ 100 people to work on that problem and file a patent. 